visiting four locations targeted by Hamas on October 7th. A UN team says there are reasonable grounds to believe sexual violence happened during the attacks and continues to happen to hostages being held in Gaza. We found clear and convincing information that sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture, cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment has been committed against captives. The allegations of sexual violence have been widely reported since October 7. But this is the first time the UN has formally sent a team to look into it. In the report, the team writes, it gathered credible reports of gang rape, rapes of corpses of women, and naked or partially naked bodies tied in some cases to structures including trees and poles. In terms of findings on sexual violence, we found clear and convincing information that sexual violence, including rape, sexualized torture and cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment have been committed against hostages. And we have reasonable grounds to believe that such violence may still be ongoing against those in captivity. With regard to the 7th of October attacks, we found that there are reasonable grounds to believe that conflict-related sexual violence, including rape and gang rape, occurred in at least three locations, namely the Nova Music Festival site and its surroundings, Road 232, and Kibbutz Reim. In most of these incidents, victims were first subjected to rape, then killed. In other locations, such as Kibbutz Kfaraza, while circumstantial information may indicate the occurrence of sexual violence, reported incidents of rape could not be verified. In addition to these specific locations, we also found across multiple locations of the Gaza periphery, a pattern of victims, mostly women, found fully or partially naked from the waist down, with their hands tied behind their back and or tied to structures such as trees and poles, and shot. Although circumstantial, such a pattern may be indicative of some forms of sexual violence, including sexualized torture, cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment. Tzvi Salo was a five-year-old in Warsaw when World War II began. He fled with his family to Italy, Greece, and Australia, and finally found refuge in 1959 in Kibbutz Nirim on the border with Gaza. Hamas gunmen attacked Nirim on October 7th as part of terrorist attacks on Israel that left 1,200 dead, including five in Nirim. 240 people were taken hostage, including Salo's next-door neighbors. We woke up at 6.30 in the morning because there was shooting outside and we heard, Arab, we heard people who were speaking, screaming in Arabic running in between the houses. And so we locked the door and we, and we waited till the army relieves us but it took them seven hours. At age 89, Salo says he suffers most because he had to leave his kibbutz home of almost 70 years and he's not sure when it will be safe for him to return. He says the ordeal has brought back memories of his childhood fleeing the Nazis and being a homeless refugee for many years. 
Polish Holocaust survivor Sarah Jackson says having to evacuate Kibbutz Sa'ad, where she lived for six decades, has also brought back childhood memories of being a refugee. During the October 7th attack, Jackson hid for hours in her home bomb shelter together with six young people who fled the Nova Music Festival massacre. Some of them recently visited her to express their gratitude. Those <coughs> lovely people <laughs> came into my house I don't remember if they asked permission. They went to the front door, they locked the door, and I have a very big armchair in the corner, and they put the armchair to the door, and we all went into the shelter. Historians say the Holocaust is still very much part of the Israeli consciousness, and that a sense of collective trauma may have been triggered by the October 7th attacks. There were things that happened on the 7th of October, like people being locked in safe rooms for a long time, which reminded people very much of what was happening in ghettos during roundups during the period of the Holocaust. Hamas gunmen shot and seriously wounded Nova Music Festival attendee Tomer Zadik as he hid from them. Zadik's great-grandfather, Jacob, survived the Holocaust by jumping off a train headed to Auschwitz. Eight years after that, we have our own country. And Jacob's great-grandson, in the country that Jacob helped build in order for something like that to never happen again, found himself hiding in the woods for hours after being shot, fighting for his life and waiting to get rescued. And I think this terrible similarity between my story and the story of my great-grandfather really comes to show you what happened on October 7th. The trauma of October 7th, like the trauma of the Holocaust, is something that Israelis will live with for generations. Linda Gradstein, VOA News, Kibbutz Negba. إننا هنا أيها الإخوة الأحباب لا نملك إلا أن نتذكر جرائم هؤلاء المجرمين عبر التاريخ ونقدم للعالم 
اليوم مجموعة من الأسئلة ونتحداهم أن يجيبوا عليها بصدق فقد طغت المصلحة على الأخلاق وطغت الانتخابات على المبادئ وطغت الصهيونية على كل حقيقة نسألهم نسأل العالم اليوم من الذي ولماذا طردت فرنسا واستأصرت الكيان اليهودي المتمثل في الجيتو في سنة 1253 ميلادي لماذا طردوهم لأنهم نصوا دماء الفرنسيين لأنهم لأنهم سفقوا دماء الفرنسيين ذبحوهم وسرقوا أموالهم وتآمروا عليهم فما وجدوا في المحصلة من بديل إلا طردهم في سنة 1253 وطردتهم الماء ألمانيا مرة أخرى في 1945 إن مسلسل الطرد مستمر حتى هذه اللحظة مسلسل الدماء تسيل والشهداء يخضون والأبناء يحملون الراية والطرد قادم قادم بإذن الله تعالى من فلسطين كل فلسطين بإذن الله تعالى نحن لسنا أقل قوة ولا كرامة من الشعوب التي طردتهم واستأصرت شعفتهم نحن على موعد مع طردهم إن الأمة التي فتحت أبوابها وصدورها وبيوتها لهؤلاء الذين طردوا من شتات الدنيا كانت الأمة الإسلامية إنهم الذين مدوا أيديهم إلى الكلاب الجائعة والوحوش المفترسة ليطعموها فأكلوا أصابعنا نحن تعلمنا الدرس لا مكان لكم بيننا ولا مستقبل لكم بين الأمم إنكم إلى زوال
ابتهاجا وفرحا بطوفان الاقصى خرج الفلسطينيون في الضفة الغربية بمسيرات داعمة للمقاومة في غير مدينة في الله خرج الأهالي بمسيرة عفوية وهتفوا للقسام ودعوا إلى تبييض السجون من خلال عملية تبادل الأسر الفلسطينيين بجنود الاحتلال الذين أسرتهم المقاومة المقاومة اليوم أثبتت مرة أخرى أن خيارا وحيدا يلتف حوله الشعب خيار المقاومة خيار المواجهة ولتؤكد مرة أخرى أن فعلا هذا الاحتلال هو أوهن من بيت العنكبوت كما قال السيد حسن نصر الله في نابلس وزعت الحلوى في الشوارع وفي جنين سجد أفراد كتيبة جنين حمدا وشكرا لله على النصر الذي حققته المقاومة وأطلق الرصاص ابتهاجا فيما دعت القوى الوطنية إلى إسناد غزة من خلال التوجه إلى مناطق التماس والاشتباك مع الاحتلال اليوم هو يوم مجد تاريخي للمقاومة الفلسطينية وللشعب الفلسطيني المقاومة التي ردت الصاع صاعين لاعتداءات المستوطنين الإرهابيين ردت الصاع صاعين على الاعتداءات على المسجد الأقصى ردت الصاع صاعين على المطبعين مع الاحتلال Every one of us gather here is one ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give a very clear message to the Zionists on the one hand that your days are numbered and to give our solidarity and support to our brothers and our sisters in Hamas and our Mujahideen of whom we are extremely brave, we are of, of proud of. Haraka. Muqawama Islamiyah, Islamic resistance movement. Our people, there are people that are connected to the Quran. You can't join the Qassam Brigade and you are not making Salah. In fact, you need to make Salah to Tahajjud. You need to fast every Monday and Thursday. You must at least memorize 10 Jews of the Quran before you can join the Qassam Brigade. Those are the people that took over the settlements and did what they did on Saturday. There are people that are, there are people that are connected to Allah. Today and in this moment, even when we say Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd, even in our hearts it feels greater. We have brothers, your brothers all over the world that sent messages yesterday saying they cannot believe what is happening, crying out of happiness. For 75 years, 75 years, our mothers and our fathers and our brothers and sisters have been living under the brutal, continuous brutal regime of the Zionist machine. And that subuh came yesterday morning, a subuh of Izza, a morning of Karama. When our brothers and sisters who are preparing, they, they did not prepare for this a day and a night. Do we think that they could do what they did yesterday and what they are continuing to do as we sit here? Preparing for a week or two weeks? No Allah. This they are preparing for years. But this time it's something different Jamaatul Muslimin. Wallahi, when I got the news yesterday, it was like a tuma'nina like a contentment and the peace and tranquility entered my heart.
It's a little after 2 a.m. and Muhammad Ashur is making the pre-dawn Ramadan breakfast for his family. No one bothers with the light switch. They can expect just three hours of electricity at best later in the day. The family is just waking up, but Muhammad's day started 15 hours earlier. He couldn't afford to keep up his university course in political science. For the last four years, he's been waiting tables, seven days a week, the sole breadwinner for a family of nine. I'm lucky that I at least have a job, but I feel oppressed because I work 14 hours a day for $225 a month. It comes at a cost to my health. I've lost the ability to concentrate, and my pay doesn't even cover my expenses. Muhammad is indeed one of the lucky ones. Youth unemployment is at 60% in an economy devastated by 10 years of Israeli and Egyptian blockade. Hamas swept to power in the 2006 Palestinian election. A bitter internal feud saw Fatah driven out of Gaza a year later, ushering in full Hamas rule, along with international isolation by countries that call Hamas a terror group. Three wars with Israel, and now a tightening squeeze on electricity supplies by the Palestinian Authority. South Africa is one of Africa's richest countries, but it can't keep the lights on. Power cuts are affecting people at home, on the roads, at work too, and it's taking its toll. Nine hours, ten hours of no electricity as it rotates around the country. It's really very devastating to the country to have um, electricity turned off. It may be devastating, but it's not a surprise. Well, this is a disaster of South Africa's own making because there were calls, there were warnings from many years ago, not even just 20 years, but dating back. But the warnings weren't heeded. And this is the point that South Africa has reached. Last year, there were planned power cuts on 205 days. This year, it's already 129. That's every single day except two. And these power cuts can last for hours. They're needed because the system can't meet demand. Without them, the whole system could collapse.